Hey guys, this is another video where we will look at how to optimize our code even further. So we will be creating a config file to store some test data as well as generate some random data so that we are not sending same data every time with our request. And make sure to stick till the end as we will look at how we can use environment variable to store our tokens safely. So let's get started. Hey there, welcome to Automation Bro. If this is your first time on this channel, thank you for clicking on this video. I create new content related to testing and automation every week. And if this is something you're interested in, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon to get notified of my newly uploaded content. Okay, so let's take a look at our first optimization that we can do, which will be quick and easy one. So we are using this URL everywhere, which is our uh, super test URL, which is gores.co.in slash public API. Now, instead of using this URL, hard coding it over here everywhere in our files, what we can do is throw this in our config folder and then access it from there. So that in future, if you want to change that API or change the URL, you can easily do it from one place. So let's apply that change. So I'm going to create a new folder here and call this one. Well, not there. I'm going to create it in the root and then I will call this one config. And here we can add in our, let's say, I'm going to call this one QA.js. So just imagine that this is our QA environment. Um, you might be creating like a different one. Let's say your test environment, your dev environment or whichever one you have prod stage. And then here we will simply just do export default and then pass in our base URL. And my URL, I can just copy from here and then just simply paste it here. Now what I can do is instead of putting it like this, I can simply exit from my uh, file QA.js. I will import that and move this on the top here. And then I can just simply do QA.base URL. There you go. Now we can actually just access this. And obviously if I'm going to run a test, it would still work. Um, so this is good. This is a great way of doing this. But if you notice here, we are also doing a bunch of extra stuff. Like we have this super test, we are doing this QA, and then we have this request here. And it doesn't make sense for our test to have all of this either. So what I will do is also copy this and then simply create another file. This time I can call this one common.js. Think of it as your common config file. And you can name this whatever you want. I just prefer naming it this way. So, and here I will paste all of this stuff in. Um, I will move this up. And so this looks good. We have our super test. We are passing in that from QA.base URL. The only thing I will do is export my request so that I can access it in my post.js file. Instead of requiring the QA file, what I will do is simply get rid of all of this and then require my common JS file. And I can do that by well, it's not automatically importing for me, so I will import it myself. I'll just say import request from, and this is in our config, and this is common. So that's good. Now we should be able to run our test. So I'm just going to quickly run this to see if this works for us. I'll just do npm test. Okay, there you go. So our tests are working. It's running the whole thing. So um, obviously the tests are working, so we don't have to worry about that. But this is, look at this. This is much more cleaner now. We are just using one liner here. And we can do this kind of come in here, just replace this with uh, the other ones too and make sure that th those are clean too. So I won't do that right now, but you can go ahead and update your other files. So this is a nice way we created our uh, QA file, which is which has our base URL. Then we created this common file, which is actually exporting our request. So that's pretty good. So for the next optimization, what we will do is, if you notice for our post test, we are in fact for all our tests, I'm just gonna close the remaining tabs. For all our tests, we are creating data, right? We are creating data here, we are creating data or basically accessing data there, creating some over here. Um, same thing for our users, we were creating data over here too. So we were sending in some data for gender and status. Now there's an easier way of doing this instead of sending same data over and over again. You can use a library called faker.js. And the way faker works is it basically allows you to generate a massive amount of fake data in your basically browser or you can do it through Node.js. So we can actually verify that if you, if I scroll down, the way you would use this is I can say, Hey, faker.name and give me a name. So it would just give me a random name. I can get a random email or random, some information like content card information and their API is quite uh, big. So you can get like address and basically company information, DB date. Oh, there's so many stuff over here. So what we will do is import this and then take advantage of this in our test. So I'm going to head back to our test and then get this imported. So to do that, we will simply do npm install faker. This would install the faker package. Okay, so our package is installed. Now let's try to um, require it over here. So I'm gonna 
simply just do const picker and then do require picker. Okay, now let's try to update this in our test. So let's see what we can do. So we are using this, we're creating this post over here, right? So instead of doing this title, I can change this up with some random title. So I can do faker dot and they have something. And if I you can take a look over here, right? Like I can use so many stuff here. I will simply use something called lorem, which would generate a random sentence for me. And I can say, hey, if I need a line, a paragraph or a sentence, I'll say, okay, I need a sentence. And then I can do same thing here. Instead of doing a simple one liner, I can do lorem dot paragraph. And then this would give me like a bunch of paragraphs. So that's pretty cool. Now, if I try to run this, what I'm going to do is simply try to log this out to see um, how it would actually print out. I would just do data and then run this particular test here. See if this works for me. Back only. Right, let me run this and then you will see exactly what it will generate. Okay, there you go. So if I'll just move this up. So we have our title. This is just like a random sentence it generated. And then we have this huge paragraphs over here that it generated for us. So that's pretty cool, right? Like it was able to generate this title as well as body. So this is more like a real life scenario where someone would be creating a title and they won't create like something called my title, right? They would probably create something big as this and they probably add a body which would be much longer than what we were using one liner. So this makes our test much more realistic while we are generating a random data over here through lorem ipsum, but it's still a lot more text. Now, instead of, in fact, putting it over here, it's better to just use this one liner and it would generate automatically for us. So that's pretty cool. And we can use this in other places too. So for example, uh, we were creating this random user here. So instead of using this email, I can go ahead and just update it with my random faker user. So I can actually, you know what? Let me just copy this, paste it here. And I can just say create random user and call this one with faker. And I will require faker here once again. So I'll do require faker. And then for email, we saw that we can actually use an email there. So I don't need to do math.random. I can simply do faker.internet.email. And then it would, I can even say that, oh, it should take this first name or something, but I'm fine. I just want a random email. That's good enough. I can do the same thing for faker.name.first name. It would give me a nice first name. So now what it will do is if it will create a data with a new email and a new name. So I'm going to try to run this and actually import this first. I'm going to come in here instead of doing create random user, I would copy this and then I'm say create random user with faker. And this would also import it for me over here. And if I'm going to run this now, it will create a random user with my particular ID and all this data. So we can verify this by just printing it over here. So I can do log, um, let's do log the response body. And I'm gonna run the same test again. This time I'm gonna remove this console log. If I hit run, we will see that it will create a new email as well as new first name. We can change that to just name where it will create both first name and last name for us. There you go, it did. So it created this uh, new name called Aith and then created this uh, conception35 at gmail.com. That's perfect. So it actually ended up creating this for us and that's really nice. And every time I'm going to run this, it's going to create something new for me. And so this is, I think, a lot more realistic test scenarios and you can use this pretty much anywhere you're using data and it will actually create like a more real looking test data for us. So Faker is a really cool library and I use this pretty much everywhere else. I mean, you can update this to your, wherever you're using your data and just create random data through Faker. So that was one of, one of the optimization. The last one we're gonna look at is, if we notice here, we are using our token and typically you wouldn't put your token directly in your code your, because it's not safe. When you will put it to GitHub or something, people can actually see your token over here. So what you would rather do is put it in some kind of environment file and you can access that environment file directly or you can keep it locally and then when you will actually run this, your test would read from the environment file and it would pick up that token. Same thing for when you're pushing it on, let's say CI CD, you would have that environment variable stored in your actual CI CD pipeline so that your test will pick it up from there instead of you hard coding it in your actual code base. So let's see how we can change that too. So what I'm gonna do is for the environment file, I'm gonna create a new .n file here. 
and then I would simply paste my token uh, that we created over there. So I will just do token and actually name this maybe user token and then paste this here. There you go. We can have multiple environment variable here, but I just kept this one as the first one. And then what I'm going to do is remove this from here. In order to access it, we're going to have to down install another library. And this time the library we're going to use is which can actually read from our environment variable files and which is called dot n. So I'm going to do npm install dot n. So this will allow me to read my environment variable file. Otherwise, I cannot directly read from it. Um, so something didn't work properly. Oh, I spelled this wrong. It should be npm install or I can just do i. So now I will use it and I can do that by simply doing here require and I can put dot env and you would do dot config. So this would actually read it from the configuration which is the environment variable file. Now if I'm actually running my test, now here's just make something to note here that we are not actually using the token anymore. So our token is stored in our environment variable file. So to access it, let's see how we can do that. I'm going to create a new variable and I can create it here. I'm going to say const token equals process dot environment dot user token because that's what we named it over there. And I'm going to save this. Now I'm going to try to run my test to see if my test is still working. Oh, not install. Do npm test. Okay, awesome. So our test ran it successfully passed. It was printing out all these details too. So there you go guys our code is a lot more cleaner now we moved all the common stuff over here like base url is stored here you can have different base url for your qa test dev etc and then we have all configuration file related uh, common config over here we also created this helper file which allows us to create random user which is pretty nice and then we are using faker to actually generate random user or to generate random data and obviously we use created just now this dot and file which allow us to securely store our token or any other secure information. So that's it guys our test framework is pretty much created now in the next video we will start focusing on how we can create a report using mocha awesome and in the video after that we will integrate it with Jenkins. That's it for this video guys if you like the video please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Alright I will see you in the next one.